Let's begin with some, if you like, politics. Well, the opposition NDC has described as a slight in the Electoral Commission's reputation the outcomes of the Commission's internal investigations into the alleged electoral malpractice which occurred in last year's referenda. The EC yesterday shared details of the investigation at a press conference dismissing allegations of voter fraud and criminality in the conduct of the referenda which resulted in the creation of the country's latest six regions. But the minority is not having any of the EC's explanations. They are describing them as warped. You'll hear from the NDC momentarily. But first, listen to the EC's argument, starting with Deputy Commissioner in Charge of Operations, Samuel Tete, who is admitting to irregularities during the referenda, but adding those irregularities cannot affect credibility of the exercise. The commission insisted that jackets should be worn throughout the voting period for security and identification reasons. And all the coordinators and officers who monitored the, mo the voting confirmed that this directive was strictly complied with. The question is, how come that none of the officials cited in all the videos was wearing the election official's jacket? Again, these officials were not recruited online. They were recruited by returning officers and the technicians in conjunction with the district electoral officers. They personally recruited them and trained them. The returning officers handed the election materials to the officials personally, and they also went around monitoring and had personal interactions with these officials on the voting day. Finally, the election officials submitted the election results and materials back to the returning officers after everything was over. With these interactions, the returning officers could have actually identified the faces of the people involved if they were really the staff of what? The commission. A critical look at one of the videos in which somebody was thumb printing ballot papers outside the screen reveals that even the ballots did not bear the conspicuous yellow and brown colors for yes and no, respectively, as appeared on the ballot for the referenda. And in the same video, you also find out that the logo on the papers on the next table was the old one without the coat of arms, which we did not use for the referenda. It is instructive to note that all the documents we used for the referenda bore the original logo with a coat of arms which had been reintroduced before the referenda. So that is Samuel Tete there, who is Deputy Commissioner in Charge of Operations, or Chairperson of the EC herself. Jean Mensa vowed to protect the integrity of the Commission, adding that the IGP is leading further investigations on the viral videos in which some persons are seen allegedly thumbprinting multiple ballot papers. This is a matter that is very great, and I think that, you know, it's not something that the EC will condone with any of its staff whether they are temporary or permanent. It's something that we consider very, very, very grave. And it is for that reason that we went out of our way. And I'm sure that this is maybe the first time that the EC has contacted the IGP, you know, to take up matters such as this. I do not believe that this is the first time some such things have happened. But we consider it very grave because the AC has its integrity and its credibility to protect. We are all aware that in the recent past, the AC has had some damage to its credibility. And we do not condone, in, in any terms, you know, acts that will seek to mar the integrity and the credibility of the AC. And so we are working very, very hard to restore any damage that has been done to the integrity of the Easy. And you should, we like to assure you and the general public that if any official, whether it's a permanent staff or a temporary staff, is found to involve himself or herself in such acts, the EC will not cover up at all. 
the EC will not cover up at all. That's your electoral commission chairperson, Jean Mensah, there. Well, what is the NDC saying? This afternoon, they have a response. And joining me in the studio with that response is Chrissy Parker Wilson, who has just returned from a press conference held by the NDC. And we'll be uh, talking momentarily about uh, that. Parker, they, they, you're welcome to the show, by Thank the way. You. The NDC uh, this afternoon at their press conference are calling the arguments made by the Electoral Commission warped. Right. Why do they say so? Well, I mean, you, you, you listen to the explanation given by the EC and the NDC doesn't want to buy into that argument. In mm. fact, they raised the point about the jacket and indicated that, I mean, it's not mandatory for an EC official to put on the jacket when he or she is working and that they wouldn't admit that kind of response. And in fact, for them, the EC's explanation actually lowers the commission's reputation and they believe that the explanation actually provokes more questions so we can listen to the general secretary when he was speaking to the media Very well. those responses created opportunity for more questions than answers. they actually were not question, answers they were provocations for more questions they didn't explain anything as far as we are concerned. And for a moment, I, was, I, I thought that the commission considered everybody in Ghana to be a, a, a class one people who could not read through the things they were talking about. When you are talking about identity of your personnel, and the only thing you are, you are saying was that the vest, the, the vest <laughs> was different. Was there any law that prevented the officials during their work to remove the vest? <laughs> so which criminal will go committing a crime with identification marks on his body? <laughs> you see, so, <laughs> so if, he, <laughs> if the person knows he's going to steal, why would he put on things with, uh, uh, I mean, that to identify him when he's caught. So they are talking to mature citizens of Ghana who are not spectators. We are citizens and we are descending. You are questioning the authenticity of the, of the videos that were circulating on the social media. On one vein, you are not admitting that you have the means to uh, determine whether something, uh, something is proper or fake. And yet you draw conclusion that they are fake before you send them to the police. So what answer is are you expecting from the police? You have conclusively said that all those things were fake. And now you are telling us that they should go and investigate them. So what answer are you expecting from them? You see? And it's in line with uh, uh, things that are happening around us in Ghana. Whenever there is any investigation, the person setting up the investigation team will announce the outcome. Johnson Asiedu Nketiah there, he's the General Secretary of the NDC, which you're probably well aware of, responding to the, um, the Electoral Commission's um, press conference yesterday. But indeed, uh, he, he raises concerns about um, the, the fact that the EC has said uh, there, were, there was nothing fraudulent, but then they say that there are still investigations ongoing. Well, yesterday we listened to that press conference, and they said there were two viral videos. Right. One of them they have, you know, assessed, and this is what they the one that the they pronounced. And the brown yes, as yes, the one and that no. they pronounced their own mm. um, a verdict on. But then they say there was another one which the IGP. So just a quick clarification there as to exactly what the EC did. There was one that they concluded their own work on, and then there was another which they say the IGP is leading the investigation on. But Parker, mm. this was not really the focus, if I should say, of right. their press conference. Their press conference really was to deal with issues that came up from the, an IPAC meeting they attended last month. Right. Now, take us through it. This IPAC had its own outcomes, which mm. were quite controversial uh, regarding the communique that the Electoral Commission had issued after that. Speaking of limited registration what did they have to say about okay it? so this you know you remember that somewhere last month around 28th of march the 
Electoral Commission issued a communique and then the NDC came out to be battle, mm -hmm. probably dismissed the uh, content of the communique. Now, this was actually their official position as a party. Mm -hmm. And the as far content as, of their communique. And the content is of that, the communique. Is that it, if you can remind our viewers? Is that one, they were going to compile a new voters register right. for the 2020 elections and again conduct a limited registration exercise. According to the NDC, in fact, at the meeting, they all agreed and accepted that indeed there should be a limited registration exercise. Exercise. They mm -hmm. should conduct a limited registration exercise, but the 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 method or the process or, or how they are going to conduct the uh, registration exercise was inconclusive. I mean, they didn't agree on how the EC was going to do that. But unfortunately, for the Electoral Commission, when they issued a the communique, they indicated that they were going to conduct the uh, limited registration exercise at the district offices or the district uh, 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 assemblies. Mm. That is where the electoral commission is going to conduct. Which sounded then as though it was a, it was a done deal. Was that an, is what exactly, the NBC is not happy deal. about. Because if you read the communique, the electoral commission clearly stated that these are the decisions taken at the IPAC meeting. Okay. And that is why they are coming out with this communique. Okay. So everything you read on the communique uh, give us the impression that it was agreed upon at the mm. IPAC But meeting. the NDC says the things that the EC put in their communique as though it was an agreed position is not. It's not. And so today they had a press conference Good. to so, address that. Right, so they explained to us that the limited registration exercise was accepted, but the modalities were different. We can listen to the General Secretary. Great. Okay, we'll bring you the, uh, the, the sound of the, uh, uh, the NDC on that particular um, IPAC meeting that they held earlier on. We, we can't bring you that at the moment. But Parker, let's go on. If you, I see you have the, the script itself right. here. Um, take us through some of the highlights uh, they presented today. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier about the limited registration exercise, mm -hmm. and my quote says, no conclusive decision was taken on this matter. Mm -hmm. And yet the EC in its press statement after the meeting indicated that it was one of the decisions taken at IPAC. Now, that is not correct. And it's it prompted the NDC to challenge it. The NDC is indeed opposed to any system of registration which would be limited to the district offices of the EC. Now, it says evidence available shows that it is a system that will end up disenfranchising many qualified potential voters. Mm. We used two examples to illustrate the point. So they cited two examples to that effect. And Gifty, they, they were actually demanding a public apology from okay. the Electoral Commission for what they call the false representation of the outcome of the IPAC meeting. Mm. Because um, sort of the EC misled the people and that they would want the EC to publicly render an apology, an including apology. the compilation of the new voters register because that has already been said that it was said in person and that there was no uh, decision taken at IPAC meeting as far as the compilation of a new voter register was concerned. Do they have any indications as to timelines they, within which they expect this apology from the EC? Well, I, when I asked the spe specific question about whether or not there are ultimatums to their apology, mm. the answer given to me by the General Secretary of the party, George Nassim was that they are just demanding for the apology and they hope that the EC won't do that. Now, failure to do so, then they will think that there's a deliberate attempt by the chairperson, Madam Jean Mingsa, to disenfranchise some individuals within the country. This is the NDC's position. Faka Wilson has just been uh, to a press conference organized by the party this afternoon and is bringing us those updates. So key things you need to take away. First of all, the party is not as unhappy about a communique published by the Electoral Commission after last month's IPAC meeting. They say that some, some decisions were taken, of course, but they weren't conclusive. But the EC put them out as though they were conclusive. Again, they are not happy about conducting limited registration in district offices because they believe that it will disenfranchise some people. And three, they are demanding an apology from the Electoral Commission. Will the Electoral Commission heed to this call for apology? Will it not? We'll be here to bring you the development as and when it unfolds. Parker, thank you very much for coming through with that update.